Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and kittens, welcome back to the podcast. That's right. Give it up for yourself. I haven't done a pure amp video in a while, and I certainly haven't done a comparison video in longer. Still, I felt like revving the engine this morning, so we're going to do both. For those who have been enjoying the general crypto daily updates, I will be kicking one out this afternoon after the market shakes out a bit. And you know what? It means the world to me that you're watching those as well. For as long as I have been discussing AMP and Flexa, and it's been a lot of months now, I keep referring to it as a gold back pay rail. Fundamentally, it is. A traditional digital pay rail is a credit swap. It's a promise to pay. The consumer uses a credit card and promises to pay not the merchant, but the issuing bank. As it processes, the issuing bank promises to pay the merchant once the consumer settles with the issuing bank. There are a lot of pieces that go into play with every swipe of every card. And as we know, they don't always work out. In the event of fraud, and considering the billions of dollars of fraud that is committed on these legacy rails annually, I think it's worth mentioning. It is typically the merchant that eats it. The credit card companies have certainly put their best foot forward in an effort to combat this. They, uh, they added little chips to the cards. So, yeah, little chips. That fixed everything, yeah? It fixed nothing. But they have no real interest in fixing anything on their rails because ultimately they don't eat the cost of the fraud. The merchant eats the cost of the fraud. So what does the merchant do about this? They find the average and they roll it into the cost of the product. So actually you eat the fraud. It has become so baked into the cost of the products that we don't even notice anymore. And it is pushed off as inflation, standard inflation. Now, poor monetary practices certainly add to it, but that is not the end-all be-all. The end-all be-all is that crime is being committed and someone has to pay for it. You have to pay for it. We know this is happening, but like most elephants in the room, we ignore it because it is a lot easier to ignore it than it is to address it. Along comes Flexa. Flexa is not a credit swap. Flexa is instantaneous settlement between the consumer and the merchant, period. Not in a week, not after processing, right now. Flexa is asset agnostic. It doesn't care what you put into it, and it doesn't care what comes out of it. We seem to gloss over this fact. Fact. But it's not just a feature of the network. It's what creates the avenue for a takeover of the entire digital processing space. And do you know why? I mean it. I got my gloves on, and I'm ready to fight. Because nobody else can do it. Nobody. I continue to see imitators coming to market. Alchemy Pay, Cody, to an extent XRP, to a further extent Visa. I continue to see these coming to market with all of the hype that comes with a new listing and certainly all of the understanding of the product by hypers who don't see the fundamental flaws in them because they don't want to see the fundamental flaws in them. It is fresh. It is new. Therefore, it is better. Shall I illustrate? I can do that because I love making comparisons. You know what? We're going to start with Alchemy. <laughs> Alchemy Pay was going to be the amp killer. People love using killer in the thumbnails. Can Alchemy process digital payments? Yes, it can. But how? Easy. The merchant has to invest in the network. The merchant themselves have to put up the capital in ACH in order to use ACH because although it will provide instant settlement, it is still a credit swap. The instant settlement comes from the merchant's own capital pool as the transaction is processed on the alchemy rail. If it is deemed to be in good standing, 
Alchemy takes a piece for the effort, and the balance is returned to the merchant. If it is not a legitimate transaction, the merchant eats it. How is this anything but a digital Visa card on a legacy pay rail? Further, I love this one, ACH tracks every step of the transaction through the merchant. It tracks the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and it sells that data. It harvests user data as a feature of the network. Does this really belong in the DeFi? I think not. Your mileage may vary. So let's think, how does Flexa do it? You install the SDK at the merchant point of stale. Done. Yeah, that's right. ACH is going to kill it. How about Cody? Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I like Cody. I think they have a wonderful little niche product there. And as the world is big, there doesn't have to be only one payment processor. But Cody's niche is stable coins. They make it very clear in their white paper, and I see value in it. They make a big focus of merchant issued stable coins, and I think that that is brilliant. With a merchant issued stable coin, the merchant controls the terms of it. This leads to consumer rewards, something the digital community has made abundantly clear that they really like. These consumer rewards lead to merchant loyalty, brand recognition. These are all good things. But can Cody bring El Salvador to the digital world and create a single interface that allows Bitcoin to function as native currency? At this time, they cannot. Again, I see value with their market, but they are not going to bind the world together through digital currency. Now, Here's the elephant in the room, which we dare not mention due to crypto tribalism. Flexa can process these same merchant-issued stable coins. Who'd have thunk it? It can process anything. And uh, for a flashback, because I like to mention it on these videos, Flexa can do all of these things because of AMP. This is an AMP video, so I wanted to make sure I made that point. Flexa is a point-of-sale processor. AMP is how they do it. And no other token can do what AMP does. Specifically designed, single use, regardless of who is using it. It will collateralize anything that is fed into it, dollar for dollar, instant settlement. The biggest downside to AMP, the thing that keeps the 24-hour volume pitifully low is that it's not interesting and it won't be interesting it is not going to change its fundamental nature for the purpose of marketing it is a collateral token and that's all it is ever going to be we have war game to hell and gone all of the ways that it can be used what markets can leverage it insurance escrow contract payments real estate but although the market might change, the nature of AMP does not. It is collateral, and collateral is not interesting. As the world continues to embrace digital payments, it becomes more and more apparent to me that one thing is a cut above the contenders, and that is the basic nature of a gold-backed pay rail like Flexa. It is borderless. This is proven as fact. It is agnostic, also proven as fact. It is simple to implement. And over a long enough time span, my opinion, just my opinion, it will be the one that all other rails are measured against. Keep it simple, stupid. AMP keeps it simple. I hope you guys enjoyed this trip down memory lane. I know I did. I don't know if you could tell. Gets me fired up, but I love talking AMP. And sometimes it's nice to shake off the noise and get back to basics. This video, like AMP, is basic. Live stream on Thursdays and member stream on Saturdays, both at 1900. Hope you guys had a good time. Cheers.